Yeah. 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 We love this album so much, we had to tell you about it. Um, it's super cool. How did it all come about? Um, well, <laughs> Jimmy and I have known each other for some time now. We actually met in a pottery class, would really? you believe? No. Of course we know. It's incredibly no. Yeah, no. Okay. Okay. Well, well, that's um, not what I'd call it. <laughs> it came about... Um, I went and saw Jimmy Barnes play with the Stray Cats in 1990 and I handed him a tape and it took, two. it took 33 <laughs> years for him to give me a call <laughs> back. But, but the, uh, uh, the, the thing that sort of cemented our friendship, I think, was a love for this kind of music, 50s rockabilly stuff. And we always said, one day we should make a record. And we've been saying this for a long time. And you were having the same conversations with Slim Jim. Slim Jim. Hammond. Slim Jim, went from the, that 1990 gig, when, when they came out and toured with us, uh, we, him and I headed off straight away. And we've been talking about making a rockabilly record. And then when we started saying the same thing, we thought, we've got to get Slim Jim. Yeah. So the, the original idea was sort of a trio, wasn't it? With a trio with me singing, by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so it's not been a before. It doesn't work out. <laughs> anyway, but, the, um, but the, the idea was to do that. But as we started selecting material, we realised, you know, Kevin Shirley, the producer who put this all together, which was an amazing feat in itself, said, you know, why don't we, do, why don't we get a piano player? And we go, oh, do you know any? And he said, Jules Horn. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> He's just one of the best, you know. Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, and then there was a, you know, we, we went on, we were selecting more tracks and we decided we are going to do, a, you know, a Bill Haley song. And, you know, that Bill Haley song was so driven by the sax and we thought, yep, yeah, we need a sax player too. Yeah. <laughs> so we ended up, you know, it became a lot bigger than we than we thought. What yeah. What is it about the rockabilly genre specifically? Because it's like, I feel like it's not as much in the forefront, especially fifty style rockabilly. Yeah, I mean for me it's kind of ground zero. It's it's the first kind of music that I got into. It, I mean the, the Living End was a rockabilly covers totally. band basically. Yeah. You know, so we didn't really fit into Wheelers Hill <laughs> at all. When we were growing up. <laughs> but um, it's just the music that I fell in love with. And and then when we struck up a friendship, it just so happened to be that it's what Jimmy liked as well but it's such it's such energetic it's like an american art form it's so, yeah. so and energetic really, it, was, it was like punk in its day you know yeah. it was a really it was the, it was the rebellious genre it of music it looks fun like and it's watching, a lot of fun it just that, looks like it, it so much is going on hillbillies that's us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it never dies right no like, and, you, and you you know, just, every time you hear it you go yes i love this yeah. and and we we've had a, had a love of that music for a long time and i you know i go and see you know chris's band you know living end they're just like they're not really rockabilly anymore they're more more you know Harder than that, but that's you can see that those roots in, in everything they play, mm. and obviously in everything he plays. And I just I wanted to do this record with him, so you know. You're all from different corners of the globe. Yes. Have you ever actually been in a room together and performed? No, no. Oh, <laughs> wow. We've never sat in the same room together. This is the first time. <laughs> yeah. Very nice to meet you, by the way. Nice to meet you. Uh, so, no, uh, we literally haven't been in the same room, and um, it's one of those things where. Uh, you'd think as a rockabilly band, you, you'd have to be in a garage, yeah. you know, maybe a slab of beer in the corner, kids, you know, drinking and, and playing hard rock. The kids I, I, drinking? <laughs> you know, I mean, when you say kids, I mean, we got comparatively, oh, maybe yeah. 18. <laughs> All right. So, no, but... <laughs> no, this this is a very dark genre. <laughs> no, no, but, but it's sort of the, the technology, because we did this in isolation, so, and we did it, it sort of limited what we could do. Mm. And, and so right. it was sort of like going back 50 years as far as, you know, you, when in those days when bands recorded, they had an hour, do your album yeah, and get out of the studio, yeah. and, the, and the technology was really minimal. So we sort of, we had, we had to really just think about what we wanted to play and look at the song and enjoy the performance. We normally didn't know what it sounded like until it came, went right around the world and came back to us. And I go, oh, that worked. <laughs> wow. yeah, so it was really, it was really good. Yeah, track by track. Every track that would come back, we'd go, hmm. that's good too. <laughs> Can we just put ten of them together and there it is. How do you feel about playing it live, though? Because that's going to be a whole new thing. It will, because we've got to get four of us in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> Are uh, you going to do that? or Because I know you've got gigs coming up. and it, we, yeah. We've got Red Hot Summer Tour coming up yeah. and, and, and By the Sea. And, and on the, you know, Chris and I were, were talking about it. At some point, either I'm going to invade his stage or he's going to invade mine. Uh, you know, that uh, happens every happens time. Happens every anyway. time anyway. Can and, I just and, give we, you a tip? And we could... You're playing Origin pretty soon. Yes. I mean, that would be a hell of a stage to Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. All right, I'll tackle you. <laughs> <laughs> but we were talking about it at the back, and um, we, you know, we figured it's sort of like skiffle, isn't it? This music, it's sort of like yeah. skiffle, and we and it needs acoustic guitar. We, we're looking for uh, another guitar player. Wow. Up there, right? Here we go. Up, I have to pick up on this. You've promised that I would play your well, next album your for chance. about the last ten years. This is your big and chance. And I've never heard a call it from took you, Jimmy Barnes. No, you know what? I'm up for it. You're up for it. You we'll get, you, we'll get your pair of, uh, you know, Beetle Crusher shoes <laughs> yeah, and, and right. stove pipes I'm and in. you're in. <laughs> a bit of a change.
change of pace. Every time we see you recently, it's unfortunately after some sad news. Uh, really, I know. And um, your Simply the Best duet with Tina Turner was absolutely legendary. Yeah. I mean, today we have to ask you what your memories were of that time. Oh, listen, you know, I, I was... I, I, you know, I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning. I don't know why I couldn't go to sleep. And, and I, I, I listened to... Turned the radio on for a second and it announced that Tina died. So I, I haven't... I can go back to sleep again. Tina, it was one of the most exciting moments and, and highlights of my career to go and sing with Tina. I've been a fan since I was, you know, since Riv River Deep Mountain High. And I literally, a gang, me and my mates in, in gangs in Elizabeth, we, we went to the Apollo Stadium one night and kicked the door in and charged through, got in for nothing so we could watch Ike and Tina Turner. Oh, wow. And my mates really just wanted to start trouble. But I ran down the front and I stood there and I watched Tina Turner perform and, and it was the, like, voice of a demon it was incredible but but just uh, the best energy i've ever seen and i remember thinking that's the way i want to perform i want to sing like that and to fast forward to the to we did this song simply the best i went there and she was just phenomenal the minute she opened her mouth she was warm she was gracious she was nurturing i was like terrified <laughs> <laughs> and, and literally they, they i've told this story a couple of times on radio they they were going to um they, they were ma making the film clip and the, the director said we're just going to pan across and then you and Tina be dancing. Anybody who's seen me dance, I, I dance <laughs> I dance like an elephant tied to a tree. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, and Tina must have seen the panic look on my face because she leaned over quietly and whispered, "Stand still, honey, and I'll make you look good." <laughs> <laughs> and she almost did. You know? <laughs> but it was it's a very sad news. But uh, you know she left. Uh, and you know a, a mark on this world that you know there's no singer like her. Yeah. But it's interesting hearing you talk about her as a vocalist, and I, Chris, you're obviously a fantastic vocalist as well. I was actually thinking, listening to both those voices together. Don't you think they're the same voice? Like she's the hers is the female voice that is the equivalent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You, know, I, 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 you, you, you guys gave each other a run a run for your money. Well, I you grew know. up and I, when I was listening to the radio, I would sing along with girl singers, and Tina was the one that I liked best. You know, wow. and so I and I you know when I got to sing with her, listen, I, I hate to say it, rugby league paid me a fortune. I would have done it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I would have paid them. It's but like, it's it, like it, it was just it was just awesome, and and it was literally a highlight of my my career to to, to sing with her. Do you know the Nutbush though? Well, I, no, the, the medicine, that's what they do, don't they? But they jump them. <laughs> they, used to, they used to all do it at the Largs Pier, and I'm going, what's wrong with these people? What are they doing? <laughs> well, the Barnstormer's brand new album, here it is. It's, it's a good looking album. Yeah, it right? is, right? It, you know what? This is, this is, uh, uh, I'm so pleased to get this record out. It's, it's such a, it's a labour of love for us, and, and we're really happy that, to finally get this record out. It's going to be a record. That you, go and put on the parties and, and start trouble. That's what we were doing. Oh, where the kids fun. are drinking. <laughs> 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 tomorrow. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you. Oh.